Hello YouTube. I hope everybody is doing fine. And I have no clue how this video is gonna turn out. So bear with me. It's uh, almost five o'clock in the morning as usual. That seems to be my regular video making time. Anyhow, this is my newest and latest PCB. It has almost every feature of the PCBs I had so far built into one. This is technically the only the track in micro format, but yet I call it Giga328 because I couldn't think of a word bigger than Giga. It might be out there, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, after making my Pico 328 PCB, which is this tiny little guy, and I made, uh, as an example, the analog clock with it. And this is the regular size PCB I have for the 0 0.96 inch OLED display and this one is for the 1.3 inch so let me talk a little bit about it it has uh, of course the Atmega 328 it has an LDO 3.3 volt voltage regulator it has the MCP uh, 78832 I think uh, LiPo charging module it has the Actually, this is a 5 volt regular, they're not 3.3. It says 3.3 right now. It's it's a 5 volt. I do have a 3.3 volt regular over here, the AP2112. It has room for the navigation switch. It has a temperature sensor, LM75A. It has a slide switch, on off switch. It has, with this regulator being a uh, 5 volt regulator you can input up to 16 volt in it i think it goes up to 20 volts so uh, you can use a 20 volt input for car use it has a vertical micro usb plug uh, jack connector whichever you want to whatever you want to call it you have four leds in the corners or top and the bottom edge of the pcb and those fancy holes in here are for a stepper motor these are automotive grade stepper motors that run with five volts and what better to have your own pcb for the motor so this is going to be a digital and analog i will show this demo in a second i have it haven't have it set up over here <coughs> anyhow uh, on the back you have a micro SD card slot, you have the ISP pin header, you have the pin headers for my uh, USB adapters, so you can upload code over here and you have a special button over here which is, which I'm gonna show you in a second, it's a um, oh, tasta, I can, uh, button, momentary button and it has a speaker for the small speakers that I use with my clock and what else does it have back here I think this was it so and with this little guy I made this this is the infrared temperature sensor code this is the sensor and here you can see the micro USB here you can see the micro SD card slot here's the button Here's the slide switch, here's the navigation switch and the beauty of this, like on the OLED track, you can upload code from the micro SD card over here. So this is yet for example the infrared temperature, temperature code and you can see the bottom is the object so that what's ahead of it and the ambient is the temperature at the sensor itself so if I turn this off I can unplug this 
and I can plug in, for example, the BMP180 sensor, which is a temperature, humidity and pressure sensor. And if I want to change the code, I press this button, turn it on, you'll see the blue LED start blinking real fast. That means it's uploading the code, the menu, better. and you will see it here, Giga328 by me. And then you get the menu. And these are the codes that I have currently on it. And this is the code that I'm using for the temperature. It's the tiny altimeter code, which you might have seen before on the internet. It's not by me, I just adapted it to my hardware. And once that is loading, it will load up tiny altimeter. And then you can see the altitude. You can see altitude max, altitude minim minimum. You can see the pressure. You can see the temperature. And you can see the battery voltage. It's running off 3.3 volts, so that's pretty much real close to it. And then you have altimeter again. This one changes with the, with the elevation. Of course, I cannot show it. <laughs> Anyhow, this is the ultimator code. Uh, I have not decided yet which codes uh, will come with this. Uh, probably all I can put in there. And uh, what you can also do is, so this was the ultimator code. You have here input for the tiny GPS module. <coughs> Excuse me, for the tiny GPS module I'm using. Just gets plugged in here. I will figure out a way for the wire to have it somehow go around this and glue it down here or have it, uh, I will design a 3D printed case for this, so uh, this thing has GPS also, so to change the code again, we press the button, turn it on, blue LED starts blinking, it's uploading the code, I mean the menu, I'm sorry, there we go. And uh, this on the top is actually a folder on the micro SD card which did created by the GPS tracker code which saves the location and altitude and speed and whatnot onto the micro SD card. And then you can just take the micro SD card out and put it in your computer and have it visualized with Google Earth. Uh, the micro SD card comes out like this. Very easy. It's a push push holder that I always use and here you have an EPROM reset code which is needed by the tiny altimeter because if somebody else or some other code writes to EPROM the numbers get all garbled up so you have just to use the EPROM to reset the EPROM and then you can do it. Uh, here's the tracking GPS and here's the speed for example. It's just a simple speed speedo. Again, it's uploading. Giga GPS by Hyrie, that's me. So this is your speedo. Of course, you can use any other GPS code that you like. Uh, it's not blinking because it doesn't have signal right now. Of course, I'm indoors. So this is the GPS also, we turn it off, unplug this, you can plug in any other sensor here and you can plug in any I2 square sensor up here, which has the following pinout, uh, it's not written on the back but it goes like this, so uh, voltage input on the left, ground, SCL and SDA, so obviously this has the same pinout as the infrared temperature te uh, sensor, if I hold it like this. So any module that has this pinout you can plug in directly. And uh, this way. And as I said, if you want to upload code directly to it, you can use the USB adapter. 
and this was it I will add of course some other codes to it and I will probably offer it like I do with the uh, Picotti 328 with just a bare board or actually with the, of course, the components on there and then the RTC module is separate and then I will make those as options and now let me show you the analog gauge stepper let me slide my thing here so let me try to get it closer okay here you can see the PCB on the back you can see the corners it's get mounted on the top of it like so and then you can screw the PCB down to the mod stepper motor and then screw it also down from the front with a dial and this looks something like this I turn it on it sweeps and this this code right now has a 5 volt voltage input analog voltage and you can see I'm just hold on let me slide this over here a little bit okay here's a potentiometer well, those wires are not the best connection okay this uh, the needle is very loose on here so that's why it got it, I didn't glue it down yet hold on let me put this over here okay this is the zero position and then I go up and down and if you turn it on it does sweep and it finds the zero point if you have it like in the middle it sweeps but comes back and it holds zero again uh, it's a little off because you saw it vibrating and moved a little bit but other than that it does stay there So for this I will make an enclosure also with a 3D printer and uh, I bought some, oh, that's going to be difficult to show, I'm coming here from the left, this is transparent self-adhesive foil for 3D printers, I mean, <laughs> 3D printers, I'm sorry, for laser printers. So with this I can print any gauge on here and that will become a dial and I have another project coming but I won't tell you yet so that's for later time anyhow so this is my multi-purpose uh, Giga 328 PCB for the 1.3 inch OLED display so if the zero 96 display this one is too small you can step it up a notch and go with this like i said i'm gonna make a 3d print enclosure for this also for the different versions obviously and uh, i wanted to show you the dimming feature of the clock but the camera does not show it right it's very minimal on the camera but it's more if you have it if you see it by yourself with your own eyes so the camera is adjusting uh, I'll try to do it I don't know how, how much you're gonna see it so now if I go up oh actually it starts getting bright at 6 o'clock so it's dim now and it gets brighter it's very very minimal on the display uh, on the phone it's more visible if you really see it yourself so oops I pushed it in anyhow um, the dimming is obviously not real I mean it doesn't go all the way down but that's uh, the library I'm using so that's the minimum and maximum brightness but uh, believe me it does make a difference in the dark 
So obviously, if you're in the bright, you're not gonna see the difference much. You see it more, but I can record it in the dark because then my camera gets all blurry, and uh, you cannot see anything. Anyhow, this was the dimming feature, real quick. So, if you're interested, uh, the links are in the description. And uh, thanks for watching, and take care, everybody.